what a, what a game. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of confidence that our team would be able to win this basketball game, not having Denasia Hood, because I think a lot of people are always ask, what are you going to do without Denasia? But, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to play without Denasia and win on the road. So that piece of it for me, there was a calm as a coach. But I was stressed about this game even before, you know, Denasia uh, was unable to play because they are excellent defensively. And to face a team this good defensively this early where they're, you know, ranked 10th and 11th in the nation um, is exciting to have, and you're very happy that you're going to have to have them at home. Um, they did a great job in the first half of forcing us into making, I don't want to say bad decisions, um, but the illusion that we had something that was there that wasn't. And they were able to, you know, allow that to play in their hands. In addition to that, they have a phenomenal point guard just scouting. I absolutely love three Janaya. I um, just the more I watched, the more I kept saying, "Wow, this kid has really developed." Because she played. Um, she's just a young freshman. When we were back at their place, and she played, and she played pretty good, but um, not at the level that I recognized how efficient she is as a point guard. And we all know, you know, we have Kennedy Taylor. You have a great point guard. You're in a really good position. And then when you add Shepard to the mix and all of their players that, um, in addition to those top two that were there, they're pretty efficient in their own right, being able to score. So that made me nervous as far as they have the ability to score. They're balanced as well as they're really good defensively. We have to find ways to be able to fight through that and do a great job of rebounding. I'll be honest, the free throw line wasn't really as much of a stressor as it was specific players I wanted to shoot free throws with. As a matter of fact, we finished out yesterday and we shot 83% as a team. Um, finishing out, you know, making 10 free throws before practice. So if you were to tell me we're going to miss this many at half, um, I never would have thought that because, you know, we, we do shoot free throws. We haven't shot pressure free throws in a while, but I think we might be going back to a little bit of that. Uh, you know, you were talking about Morgan City, you know, a really good defensive team. You know, when you don't have your top score in your lineup, how do you adjust your game plan for this to, against a really tough defense like Morgan? So... The, the adjustment from the game for, for game planning wise is trying to find ways that your team can be successful when you watch film. Um, and the best way and the, the way that we've been able to find success in this particular season is scoring in the paint. And I think we we saw that right. We scored in the paint at half. We we're doing a pretty good job. And they did a better job as well in the second half. So finding scores in the paint, regardless of whether Denasia was out there or not, mm -hmm. we have players that have the ability to be able to score in the paint. So that's what really what we emphasize is scoring in the paint. So the next question is, okay, well, how do we get to that place? Because they're so good at keeping you on a side. And Tiana, uh, when coach says, you know, one of our strengths is scoring in the paint, as, you know, one of the ball handlers, how do you try to get towards getting into the paint and getting those post players into the paint? Yeah, I'm just trusting that we can make the pass and get it to them and trusting that they'll finish. Um, and I think they did a good job of finishing. Like LT today, she did really a really good job of finishing, and that's just what we've been practicing all week is feeding the post and having them finish that. And, you know, Tiana, you and Lauren, you know, you're with the top scorers. Lauren had a double-double, you know, second mm -hmm. straight uh, Bobcat player with with a double-double. Uh, what was going right for both of y'all? Um, just trusting the offense, being patient, um, being disciplined, moving the ball, and trusting that, like, if we pass the ball, we'll get it back and it'll be a good shot. So, yeah. Coach, a quote that's kind of been stuck in my head is, when we were talking about that UTSA game was playing like dogs, just, you know, when everything's defensively, like shots may not be falling, it's like playing that hard defensive ball, getting those rebounds, making your free throw shots. Uh, you know, pe these past three games, getting these hard fought wins, what do you think this does to this team's confidence? I think they know that we have the capability as long as we put in the work and that it's not easy. I think that's the piece that we had to get, get through is understanding that. I think they have always had confidence because we have confidence in them and they have confidence in each other that we can win. The question is, is right? are you able to bounce back or fight back when the other team is coming at you now really hard? Just that wherewithal, that grit that you need. And they recognize now in order to have that grit, it is hard work. It is literally painful at times, physically um, and mentally exhausting. But just finding another way to beat her out on the floor and beat them out on the floor is what we're we're consistently working towards, and this is another game that I thought we got better in that area, the grit we need. It is a long conference season, and these are really important games as we move closer to that, understanding that it's going to be exhausting. You're going to be mad. Um, you're going to be physically tired and finding a way to fight through that, knowing that she all equally right now feels the same way. And so it's, it's, these are the types of games that you want, right? That's the dog mentality. That's the grit that you need.
uh, a big turning point in this game was that third quarter. Y'all go on a really big 16-0 run. I get, you know, against any team, that's a really impressive feat. Of what was going right during that stretch? They came out with an awesome attitude about getting it done just together as a team. You know, They meet on their own in the locker room before the coaches go in. They have a short period of time where they meet and reconvene again. And they brought a really positive, aggressive mindset into the third quarter. And that's what the team did. That's what the beauty of playing team sports. The team made that decision to do that together. And Tiana, what was that uh, meeting like when y'all, before coming out in the third quarter, and how was that able to basically turn that into a 16-0 run? Mm, um, just not getting down on ourselves. I feel like, I think we were down two. To, and um, there's a picture that our coaches showed us one time. Uh, we were playing UTEP, and they scored, and our, all of our heads were down. And I feel like that really stuck in our head, and we try not to let that happen. So, like, if like teams are going to make runs, but we just have to keep our head up and keep doing what we do best. And another moment, like, late in the third quarter, there was a, a double technical foul with a Taylor mm -hmm. Pruitt. Uh, and there was especially, like, a long gap where, like, the teams were just kind of huddled up, the rest were deciding, you know, what was going on. It, when a moment like that happens, how do you talk to the team? How do you kind of keep their mind, you know, focus on the game despite like all what's going on off the court? You give them a short period of time to kind of vent and talk through it, and then after that we go back to game planning mode, and you're going to have two different scenarios, sometimes three, but a lot of times it's going to be two different scenarios, right? Either they're going to make this particular call, they make that call. If they make this call, and we generally go with the way we're leaning, this is what we need to do. If they make the other call, this is what we need to do. But really just finding a way to regroup and focus to get ourselves prepared for the next play, because play doesn't stop. Um, it's, it's going to continue. So just making sure that we stay prepared versus – sitting in whatever the drama was, you know, um, or whatever the situation was uh, within the game. And in that fourth quarter, it's a Morgan State cuts it down the, I think, no, actually tied the game up. And y'all are basically, you know, trying to keep them alive, keep them down. Uh, you know, they played, y'all's y'all team played really great defense at those clutch free throws. How, you know, despite, you know, shaky free throw shooting in the first half, how important was it that the team was able to kind of put that behind them and step up when those clutch free throws are really needed? It boosts confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you know you see your teammate nailing a three, you see us getting a steal, you see us getting a big stop, you're like, all right, this is good. Because it takes more pressure off of you having to perform at a, another level when a team is just battling you. So those are positives that happen with the game. But that's, again, I go back to team dynamics, playing team sports. That's what makes sports fun and exciting is the competition. Excuse me. Especially when you have the opportunity to uh, find a way to close it and finish. And Tiana, as that team confidence, how does it feel like when, you know, when everything goes on the line, the team steps up at really big moments to, to, put, to get a really important win at home? It feels really good. Um, it just shows that all the hard work that we've been putting in in practice and the coaches, um, all the energy they put into us is paying off. So it feels really good to stay undefeated at home. And now your corporate and Corpus Christi? Yes, and Corpus Christi. Coming up this week, uh, what do you expect from this team? Coming? Another team that's going to be very similar to Morgan State as far as they are really gritty and they play really hard. Uh, Coach Chadwick has been coaching for quite some time, uh, and he does a great job with what he does. He brings in tough, physical players. So they'll have players in the roster from Texas. They'll have players from out east, a lot of players from out east. But no matter what he has on his roster, they always play hard. You know, they, they go in and out of the mid-major poll, top 25. Um, you know, every single year, and they've also won a championship. So it's really important that we understand that. We're going to enjoy this win tonight, and then we've got to prepare right this next upcoming week for a tough team who's going to be able to, you know, come in here with their own confidence as far as the adversity that they've seen in the preseason and play. But you're going to see a tough team for sure. Coach Chadwick's teams are really tough. They're really physical. They don't stop. Um, but we've had the benefit of seeing teams like that as well in the preseason, and I'd like to think we're moving there too. All right? We're a tough team who's going to be physical, and we're not going to stop.